All right, here's the next topic, domestic violence, domestic violence in the Black community. From where does it stem and how can we fix it? Um, I claim, I don't claim to be an expert, okay? Um, that's why I asked the people to come onto the show tonight because they have different expertise and different experiences that they can offer to the show. But I did um, do a little bit of research, and not just today, but I've read a lot about domestic violence and learned a lot about do domestic violence in our communities, and it's alarming and it's scary. And I want to talk about it, and I want to have a, a productive conversation about it. In light of what happened with the baby and Danny Lee, I noticed that a lot of YouTube channels were uh, talking about domestic violence, but I did not see that they were talking about it from a solutions-based um, perspective. It was more, well, what's wrong with women that they're hitting men now? And, you know, just more or more like gossipy. You know, like, oh, did you hear what happened? It was gossipy. I really want us to have more of a solutions-based discussion. Um, and I want us to dig a little deeper about where this stems from. Um, here, here are a few stats that we have um, about domestic violence, okay? Um, it says, according to the 2010-2012 National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, nationally, 45% of Black women experience sexual contact, I'm sorry, experience contact, sexual violence, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. The same survey found that 40% of Black men experience contact, sexual violence, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. Um, Black victims were significantly, significantly more likely to be killed by an acquaintance than white victims. Um, about 17% of Black women in the U.S. experience sexual violence other than rape by an intimate partner during their lifetime. 15% of Black men experience the same. Okay, nearly three in 10 women and one in 10 men in the U.S. have experienced rape, physical violence, and or stalking by a partner. Okay, and there are many other stats um, that are very alarming. Okay, mm -hmm. I um, cross check some of this data and pretty much across the board, sources say the same thing. Okay, I'm going to link these sources in the comment section. Um, but some of them come directly from the CDC website. Some of them come from um, the uh, domestic violence statistics website as well. And so you all can look at those. But I want to ask you all, where does domestic violence stem from? What do you all think? Who likes to chime in first? If, if I can. Okay. So... Uh, I, and I actually do facilitate family violence and intervention um, periodically. Um, I think that where it stems from, first, we got to understand that it's so many different types of abuse that kind of mm -hmm. coincides with domestic violence. We talking physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, economic abuse, psychological abuse. Um, I think a lot of times we look at the actual physical violence when we talk about domestic violence and there's all different types of violence that, that occurs within domestic violence. Um, we also have to, you know, look at as well um, the roles that people play in abuse. And I think one of the biggest roles is, is three main um, roles that I kind of talk about uh, when I'm treating this abuser, you got your target, which is like your victim. And then you have the bystander. And I think that in the African-American community, bystanders contribute to a lot of this behavior. Um, mm -hmm. We are so, you know, not as I say, do as I say, not as I do. We are so, you know, don't get in other people's business. What happens between a man and a woman stays between a man and a woman. All of these generational um, codes of conduct that we've been kind of passing on and passing on it just perpetuates the cycle. It just perpetuates the cycle. And then you get a person in a situation where they don't even realize that they're being abused because they've been told for so long by many different generations 
or, or different age groups or different people in their family that this is a norm when it really isn't a norm. So, you know, I want to bring that out as well, that I think a lot of times we look at domestic violence and we look at um, just the, the actual physical violence part. Um, I don't know if you all saw on Twitter um, and I think Instagram, the, the NFL player that um, it was caught on the security camera in the home. He, he physically attacked the mother of his child inside of the home and listening to her doing interviews and listening to her talk about his patterns of behavior. Yes. Um, there has been abuse going on within this relationship for a long time, but because people don't understand that there's so many different types of abuse, no one wants to call it domestic violence until someone starts putting hands on someone when really domestic violence started way before that. So I, I do want to point that out um, as we start this discussion. Thank you. Where, where does it stem from? I know TJ earlier you were sharing a little bit of your story and you said that it's you got all the way to your 50s before you started or before you experienced um, domestic violence. What do you think it was that got you to and it's not I'm not saying it's your fault. Let me be clear about that. OK, uh, when somebody hits somebody else, it is nobody. It's their fault that they did that. Right. But. I do believe from, from what I've learned, and you all correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I've learned, sometimes women and men have certain internal issues, whether it be self-esteem or fear, you know, fear of leaving, you know, that keeps them in a situation where they're being abused. What, what do you think it stems from? Like, why do you think you allowed that to go on and i had to say allowed but you know what i mean How, why do you think you sustained that and why do you think your partner i know you can't speak for him but just what do you think um is the reason why he even got to that point where he was abusing you well he didn't actually put his hands on me to the very last day but to your point um, uh, Ms. Jovo, you're absolutely right. The That was the culmination. You know, it had started early on with uh, degrading me and talking down to me, cursing me, calling me names, actually cursing mm -hmm. at me in church. Um, and it's interesting, I think, you know, again, another shameless plug, me and my daughter did, because I wanted to, my daughter, you talk about bystanders, Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Take mm. your time. Take your time. And we got you. Um, wow. Whew. I wasn't ready for that one. Um <clears throat> to see my parents see their 50-year-old child and feel so helpless. Mm -hmm. And I am the woman, and even when I told my husband about it, when I met him, he was like shocked because I am not that person. Mm -hmm. I would be the person that would cut you off at the knees. You know, a military officer for 20 plus years, I'm, a, you know, I'm in your face. Mm -hmm. But it goes to what you're saying. There was a point in my life, I was lonely. Mm -hmm. My daughter was gone, you know, she was gone living her life in college. I'm by myself, mm -hmm. you know, I want, didn't want to be by myself. And I'm saying to myself, well, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty up there in the federal government, you know, making really good money and understanding that, you know, my selection pool is not going to be as far as economically speaking. I'm thinking, well, you know, Terry, why don't you just, you know, mm -hmm open your horizons and so, and not be so picky. <clears throat> so I did, you know, you know, it didn't matter. And, and I've never been a person that really cared about how much money a band made or anything like that. Because again, if we were going to be together, we were going to be together. But so I did. And what, what, and I say with the lies we tell ourselves, because initially you know, I, I had talked with my daughter and when on one show we were saying, 
what I thought I was showing her as a, a woman versus what she actually saw. And she said, what she saw in me is how I dominated in my relationships. Mm. That's, you know, I, so, so when I met this man, I'm thinking to myself and I'm justifying, I said, well, this guy's just not going to let me run over him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, so that's why, you know, he's just not going to let me run over him because I know that I could plow through. So that's how I justified it that this guy's just not going to let me run over him. Mm. But then it started to be more than that. And it was happening and I didn't even realize it was happening. You know, he was, you know, I would make a suggestion and he would, wow. Mm. And I was so good. I thought at watch, you know, because I have a scar on my arm that I've had since I was 16 years old from saving my mother from being, abused so I thought it was really good at being able to scope that kind of stuff out but it it comes from and I later found out to your point Mr. Vonda he was raised in an environment himself where he saw his father do it to his mother and that the mother Mm -hmm. you know would get you know, degraded by the dad. So, you know, and because he felt a sense of inadequacy himself, he made me, tried to make me feel inadequate. Mm -hmm. And it culminated with, um, and, you know, and I later found out he was a con man, basically. You know, had I done my due diligence, I would have found out that he had a record. Mm. of assaulting another woman. So, but I think it it stems from, for the person who is the victim, you say, the person who is, um, has a low self-esteem, does not have a, a, even though they project this this sense of self-worth, but they really Mm -hmm. kind of questioning it, you know? And the the perpetrator is acting off a low self-worth as well. So they want to, you know, because they feel bad about themselves, they're going to make you feel even worse about yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where it comes from. Um, I'm glad I lived through it. Uh, Because I think had my brother not been there, I probably wouldn't have. So Mm -hmm. I think that's where it comes from. Okay. All right, definitely coming from a place of feeling um, low self worth or mm-hmm. feeling fe- like a little bit of fear. You know, I know TJ. You know, you you mentioned about you know being at a certain economic status and feeling like, oh man, I'm not. You know, I got to kind of take what I can get, which is, you know, mm-hmm. I think a lot of women. You know, I think men kind of see it differently, but really. Black women are constantly told we got to kind of take what we can get, right? Um, and we we feed into that. You'd be a great woman, you know, with a lot to offer, but we kind of feed into thinking we got to kind of take what we can get. Sometimes. And that is so untrue because it's interesting because my husband is very much, does not let me run over him, but he has never raised his voice to me. Yeah. Not once. He has never cursed at me. Not once. We have never argued, not once, but he makes his position very clear (laughs) and it's, and it's just, so it showed me that again, how I justified it to myself, well, this is, he's just not going to let me run over. Well, my husband doesn't let me run over him either. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And he's very strong and very, you know, but he, he didn't do it that way. So, you know, yeah. Live right. and learn. 